And God said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness and let them have what, y'all? Over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, keep going. He says, he says right here, come on. He says, and God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him. Guess what he did? He made male and female created <laughs> he them. Okay. And he said, and God blessed them. And then he says to them, I want you to be what? Fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and what? Have dominion. Listen to what I'm saying here. He'll never ask you for something that you don't have, and he always asks you for stuff that he's given you. So if he's telling you to be fruitful and multiply, we understand that from the, from the perspective of sowing f- seeds and reaping a harvest. Now, even when he created the trees and every plant on the earth, he put those things in place. But within them, the next verse talks about he had seed. Watch this. Watch this. It says, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat. Now, so watch this real simple. He gave you an orange so that you can have more oranges. He put seed in it, right? The only way you can get another orange is that you can't just eat the orange and spit out the seed. You got to do what with the seed? You got to plant it. You got to sow it. But in that seed is more orange. So put it this way. He wouldn't ask you for something he didn't give you. He wouldn't be able to tell you to replenish the earth if he didn't put seed in man already. So if he did it for fruit, he did it for us. The only reason why you're able to recreate and have families is because he put seed in you. He ain't going to ask you for something you don't have. He's not going to ask you for something you don't have. If if your faith ears are on, he's not going to ask you for something you don't have. So if he tells you to sow a million dollars, you must have seed for it. Because <laughs> he ain't going to ask you for something you don't have. But you're so busy focusing on what you can't see, you can't see what you got. I don't have a million dollars. You got seed? You ain't got an orange orchard either, but you got some orange seed. And if you got seed in your hand, there's an orchard in your hand. The difference between you and somebody else who look at the same seed is they see the orchard, you see the seed, so you see nothing. And that's the reason why people are continually sizing you up the way they size you up. They don't realize you in seed form. So when they look at you, they look at and see nothing. And they talk to you like you're nothing. And they tell you that you're not going to be anything, but you believe it. But if you would understand, I'm just in seed form. And except a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it brings for what? much fruit that you got to understand the people that are saying what they're saying is part of the death process you need to be crushed you need to be buried because unless the seed is buried it cannot thank God for those who buried you in reality they saw your potential but you didn't understand it and the truth is they were fighting your potential but being used by the most high to bury you to make sure you grow the same people that buried you and left for you to dead don't realize they're the same people that's going to eat off the fruit of your life. <laughs> In other words, the scripture talks about it like this. That, well, first of all, first of all I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you in the Rodney version. God going to let people live long enough to see you blessed. Psalms 23 says like he's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Which means if he's going to prepare the table before, before you in the presence of your enemies, he got to let you live and let them live long enough to see you blessed. Yes, yes, yes. You need to shout out real loud, thank God for those who buried me. Thank God for those who buried they me. didn't bury me, they planted me. It's mindset. It's all how you, you have to have an extreme paradigm shift in how you think. Oh, they walked away from me. They just wasn't good fertilizer. Oh, they, watch this, they did me wrong and then they left. 
You need somebody to crap on you so you can grow. You, you, got, you got to have the right mindset. You, you understand what I'm saying? There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, where the, where the crib is clean, uh, there is no increase, but much increase come by the oxen. In other words, what it's saying is that when the ox is walking through the field dropping dung, the ox is creating increase. What you call a mess is a blessing. Amen. Touch somebody and say, I needed them to crap on me. It's all what? That's how you see people praising in mess that you don't understand. Because we've appropriate what's taking place. Wow, they really crapped on me big time. They really buried me big time. No, they planted, fertilized you, and walked off. They may not get a chance to see the increase, but the increase is coming. 